Hello everyone, um, Scott here. I wanted to, uh, thanks for watching the other mix breakdown videos that I did. Um, and I got a pretty good response from those. So I wanted to crack open some more tracks that I've recorded up here in the attic and just break down some of those mixes and show you um, what goes into making up a track. I'm not gonna really go in too deeply into the plugins or anything, but it's just cool to look at the different layers that make a song. Um, this song is uh, a song called Reverie from an artist on our label called Fanny Price. And I'll include a link to the track on Spotify in the description. Um, if you have any questions about this, just leave a comment as people do, that helps a lot. Anyway, I want to take you through this track because it's a kind of, it's a pretty unique track and it's, um, I think it's kind of cool. So the first thing we did was we had an acoustic of this, uh, first, let me play you a little bit of this song here. Really mellow track. And I'm going to take you through it as it kind of expands to this, uh, bigger outro here right here. I really dig this song and what happened with it. I want to show you how we went about doing it. So we started with the acoustic, which is just a classical guitar. One take, two mics. There's this warble on it, as you'll hear on all the stuff I do, which is wow control from Good Hertz. And it's doing this like, film reel type warble. I love, I put that on everything and on my mix bus. And then add some color too and some tape saturation. Her vocals are similar to how I do other vocals. I'll just show you those real quick. Um, here's the dry vocal. And my bathroom verb, which is from real verb from UAD. Really subtle, just a room sound. Then I add the lush verb, which is from the effect rack, which is this infinite delay, but it's really subtle. And it's, you can see they're lowered quite a lot. Here's them together with an EMT 140. We kind of wanted an intimate sound, so there's not a ton of reverb on this. And here's her harmonies. And they're going to that lush verb as well. Here's all the vocals. Two sets of harmonies. Each harmony is du uh, duplicated, recorded twice, and hard panned. Except for this harmony, it's hard panned, not hard panned. So we had this um, little uh, bouncing Moog that goes throughout the whole song. And as you can see, it's, it's swelled in. Um, there's a crossfade you can't see right now, but or a, a fade in. So it just kind of gets louder. This is the Moog Sub 37, probably through a, a DD3 Boss delay pedal. And that warble is from the Fairfield circuitry um, tape saturation pedal. I can't think of it right now. Shallow water with a huge filter on it. So that's playing and that's kind of getting a little bit louder as the track goes on. Same thing is happening with these two Moog parts. So there's one here on the left ear. This would be a really slow arpeggiator, like, uh, like on quarter notes, probably playing one chord through the whole song with some delay pedals and going through a little bit of uh, this EMT 140 reverb. Then on the right ear is a similar sound, a different take, a different pass through on the Moog to create this drone. Then you pair it with this.
and the acoustic. And that's pretty much how the song got started. And then I'll show you this big outro. So um, the first thing that happens is on the uh, on the bridge we have a drum beat, which is a vocal beats, and it's going through the Boss DD3 or a Memory Boy. I'm not sure. That's it right here. And then here's the big outro, and then I'll break it down for you. Okay, so first thing you probably notice is this banjo here. This was a cool thing, so take a listen to the banjo. So what you're hearing is two takes. There's four chords that I, I played here. This is take one, one mic, and that's repeated throughout the rest of the song. And then I played it again on the left ear, but this time what I did was I delayed it by uh, an eighth note um, and it's 100% wet. And so together there's a bit of delay and it adds this ping pong feel. I really liked it. The drums are something that we discovered really early on in the process and it's a drum loop. That's a fill. And then this is a drum loop that we added uh, into, uh, we added Echo Boy to. We probably even did this wow control. I bet you this is doing a, no. There's a lot happening with these drums. I can't remember what we did to them, but there is definitely delay that's giving it that ping pong and it's changing the beat. The original beat was probably way more minimal. But that was a drum loop, that was a drum sample. Probably from those uh, Converse free drum samples. I always steal from them. Well, they're free. Um, tambourine with that vocal beat and two shakers. That's the percussion. Bass is really simple. Just these whole notes on electric bass. And then I added a sub bass, which you probably can't hear. And it's on the Moog, just to kind of thicken up the real bass. At this point, those Moogs are kind of getting bigger and swelling. Oh, this is cool. Right now, there's on the mix bus, there is a filter freak. And that's what you can see des uh, descending here. And it's pulling the frequency back on the outro, which I thought was cool. It's kind of like an EDM move. The whole song gets basically folded up into this as the frequency is automated uh, to filter out the song. You know I love fade outs, I've showed you that on other videos. So this was like a fade out, but it was using a filter. Um, there was one other thing. We added a field recording of a mall at the starting of the outro. This is a field recording recorded on a Zoom in a, in a mall, and it has a, a lot of filters on it. It's a pretty narrow band, but it adds a texture to the recording. I hope that's everything. Thanks for watching.